Watching them is one thing. Surviving them is another. And teenagers know this all too well. Classics like Halloween, Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream, and literally almost every other horror movie made all have one thing in common. Dead teenagers. But that's besides all the blood and guts, premarital sex, and the occasional obligatory tit shot. See anything you like? But seriously, dead teenagers. And I'm not the only one who's noticed this genre of film. I started to see a lot of movies that have the very same plot, and I realized the plot came down to this. The movie begins with a lot of living teenagers, and then it ends with all of them dead, except for one, who was necessary to come back in the sequel and tell the story about what happened last summer. Why teenagers? Why do audiences across America find not only the victimization of teenagers, but women as well, entertaining. In order to understand this concept, we first must learn the history of horror and the genre, first dating back in the 1940s. The 1940s and 50s were the gothic era of the horror genre. The film's central antagonists weren't knife-wielding masked killers, but instead monsters. People all across America would flock to movie theaters to see the newest and latest creature features and were terrified beyond belief. At the time, it seemed like this genre of horror was unstoppable and would never go away. It wasn't until the year 1960 when acclaimed director Alfred Hitchcock created a new kind of horror movie and influenced a new fear of motel showers. The film went by the name Psycho and starred Janet Lee, Anthony Perkins, and Vera Miles, and it was the first attempt of pulling the horror genre out of the now old age gothic era and audiences were horrified all over America. What you are about to listen to are genuine screams from within the theaters that Hitchcock recorded for Psycho's marketing campaign. The Oscar-nominated film grossed $32 million, which is the equivalent of $250 million in 2018. Along with being a financial success, Cycle was critically acclaimed and labeled as a pioneer. The film not only made an attempt to change the genre itself, but it also introduced a trope that dead teenager movies would use for many years to come. It was known as The Opening Girl, most notably seen in the blockbuster hit Scream. It wasn't until 1978 when director John Carpenter created a film that surprised Hollywood, critics, and audiences by daring to defy them all and introduced moviegoers to a new kind of horror movie. I feel emotions. There was nothing like it. It just blew me away. It certainly has become a classic. Halloween ushered in modern horror. You can sort of look at horror and it's before Halloween and then it's after Halloween. <laughs> Independent films rise to fame, made it an instant classic. The Halloween the movie everybody had to see. Everybody who went to see that film got on the phone and told three other people, and those three told six other people, and within three or four days, it was huge. The film captured the imagination of a generation. 
This movie gives me the creeps. It is really scary. I remember getting goosebumps. And gave its producers what seemed to be an unstoppable franchise. Damn, yeah, I killed the boogeyman. <laughs> this killer masked, unknown, but is a force of nature. Michael Myers, he is purely and simply evil. The small independent film, released on October 25th, 1978, not only launched the career of Jamie Lee Curtis, but was praised by audiences and critics and massacred at the box office, grossing 47 million, which is the equivalent of 300 million in 2018. The film would go on to spawn a slew of sequels and was honored by being labeled the original dead teenager movie. Halloween, which I thought was a, was a very good movie. Halloween was a good film, but uh, like all good films, it inspired a lot of films that were not so good, and that cheapened uh, its original artistry into kind of a formula that just consisted of chasing and victimizing women. However, not all of these films were bad. Classics like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Evil Dead, and Scream were both commercial and critically acclaimed films because they built off of Halloween's original dead teenager formula. And these films, just like Halloween, would go on to become a franchise, releasing sequel after sequel. Back in the 80s, a new visual style in horror movies had started to be used in which the camera would stalk the woman. Previously, the camera would have identified with the woman, and we would flee with her. Now the camera would identify with the killer, and film critic Roger Ebert labeled this new technique as unhealthy for viewers. The most notable element of a dead teenager movie is the final girl. The term final girl was coined by film professor Carol Clover in her book Men, Women, and Chainsaws, where she described the final girl as the main character, protagonist, and the emotional center of the film. In the end, she's usually the one that puts the puzzle together. Don't you see? He's got us now. She finds the dead bodies of her friends and figures out who the killer is. She's the sole survivor who has to at first run from the killer, but then eventually goes back to fight him. Although the main audience of slasher movies is young men, these men ironically identify with the final girl, and especially gay men arguing that these men who at first identified with the victimization of her, then identify with her strength and victory. The story of the final girl is purely and simply the story of redemption. This trope was birthed through Jamie Lee Curtis's character Laurie Strode, the original final girl in the movie Halloween. What made Jamie Lee Curtis's character Laurie Strode a final girl were her differences from the others. She's physically the tallest of her friends, and she was the only girl who spent the night babysitting instead of drinking and getting laid. She would eventually fend Michael Myers off with a sewing needle and a kitchen knife. Both are phallic tools. She lives while the others die. Laurie is mocked for her lack of sexual experience, but in the end it's actually her virginity that saves her life which allowed her to come back to fight Michael Myers time and time again. Why? But more importantly, why dead teenagers? Why glorify the murdering and victimization of teenagers? Why is society okay with the idea of somebody buying a large bag of popcorn to snack on during the 90 minutes of chasing, torturing, and the killing of teenagers? What is it about these films that draw audiences in? And more importantly, why are teenagers so attracted to go see them? An awful lot of urban legends focus on teenagers and teenage horrors. This is probably because teenagers occupy a very specific place within society. There's a lot being expected of them and demanded of them. They're supposed to get good grades. They're supposed to behave in a, 
in an upright and positive manner. They're not supposed to be having sex or doing anything strange or taking substances. No, 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 no. So I think a lot of urban legends comment on this place that teenagers occupy within society. They are really in reality concerned about sex and school, getting into the right college, yet sometimes they can't necessarily express these issues and they instead become these other whores they're not truly concerned about in their lives like this boogeyman or this anonymous strange killer that could come take them and sometimes these legends are really talking about something else so for example you have the hook and the hook is a timeless urban legend at this point from the middle of the last century and everybody knows it every adolescent girl in particular in this story you have a boy and a girl necking in a car on some kind of deserted lover's lane when they hear on the radio that some guy with a hook for a hand has escaped from a lunatic asylum and is going around killing people. So they drive away and when they get home they notice that there's a hook in their car door. This is all about sex, right? Because the car pulls out and there's this hook left hanging. So, you know, this is really not talking about a killer, it's talking about sex. You, know, you could look at the story on the literal level, don't do something you're not supposed to, but there's always another level or multiple levels to look at in these kinds of narratives. Another element within dead teenager movies is the juxtaposition of sex and death. Horror presents and confronts fears head on. It's not necessarily saying that these horny teenagers deserve to die for having sex, but slasher movies do dramatize the backlash they fear for what they do. A recent study at Berkeley University shows that unintentional Christian values tend to carry over into the slasher genre. Think about it, an overly strong, larger-than-life killer punishes teens for behaviors that are considered taboo. Basically what they're saying is that... Sex equals death, okay? Other studies show that female characters tend to die more brutally than male characters when they have sex. <coughs> Another reason as to why teenagers gravitate to these types of movies is because they're an opportunity to look deep within themselves and ask themselves questions. If you feel that there's nothing you would die for, then the underside of that is also true, which is that there's really nothing that you are living for. And I think sometimes young people today are not sure what it is that they would die for, and therefore, what is it that makes life meaningful? <laughs> so these films that have these killing forces are occasions to think of those questions. They don't actually offer solutions at all, but they are occasions in which young people can work on those feelings and maybe express them a little bit. So are these movies an escape for teenagers to look within their fears? But more importantly, is it a safe escape? Within recent years, this idea has turned into a conversation, as some people argue that these violent dead teenager movies are harmful and more than responsible for not only the violence against children, but real life murders. So. That is so moral majority. You can't blame real life violence on entertainment. As of right now, there is no link to prove a relationship between real life violence and film. It seems the answer as to why society is fascinated with dead teenager movies can have more than one answer. Is it their suspenseful chase scenes? Or their graphic deaths? Or is it their depiction of the so-called boogeyman we all once feared as a child? Or could it be the harrowing acts the final girl has to take to survive, and how we not only identify with her strength and victimization, but also her hardships and outsider view? Regardless of why or how, dead teenager movies will continue to endure for years to come. Mass killers will continue to slash. Stereotypical big-breasted girls who can't act will continue to die. Final girls will continue to outfight, outsmart, and outlast the boogeymans of the world. And most importantly, dead teenager movies will continue to grow and spark more conversations within society.